Hi there, Mercedes owners. Today in your 2017 Mercedes GLS 450, we're gonna be taking a look at and showing you how to install Kurt's Class 3 two-inch trailer hitch receiver. This hitch will secure its accessories with a 5 8 inch hitch pin and clip. Now, one doesn't come included with the hitch, but we've got plenty available here at eTrailer. And I'd also recommend locking one so you can protect your investments. On bottom, it has plate style safety chain loops. It does have kind of a moderate size opening. Our bigger chain here does click on there though without too many problems. I don't know that you could go too much bigger than a chain that size without having some issues, but, and of course the smaller ones work with it with ease as well. This hitch offers a 900 pound tongue weight, which is the force going down on top of our receiver. And with 900 pounds available to you, that should be enough for a four bike platform rack fully loaded up with four bikes, as well as the largest cargo carrier that we have here at eTrailer, fully loaded up to the max. It has a 7,500 pound gross towing capacity, which is how much that it can pull behind it. And with 7,500 pounds available, this thing has a ton of uh, options that it could do. You could pull plenty of different sized boats with it, small, medium. Uh, boats no problem, jet skis should be no problem. If you've got a smaller pop-up camper, that should be no problem. And even some of the medium-sized campers, uh, like full-size, more middle-sized ones, you should have no problem with those as well. Now, as always, I do recommend you verify in your vehicle's owner's manual and ensure you don't exceed any of its towing capacities. So now I've got some measurements for you to help you when deciding on accessories. From the center of our hitch pin hole to the edge of our rear bumper, it's at about seven inches, so it is tucked under pretty nicely. This is important though when determining if your accessories can be inserted into the receiver without contacting the bumper and if they can be placed in the upright storage position without contacting the bumper. And from the ground to the top inside edge of our receiver tube, we're right at about 12 and a half inches. This is important when determining if you need to drop, rise, or raise shank on any of your accessories. And since this one does sit so low, I would recommend a raise shank on your accessories. We'll begin our installation here at the back of the vehicle. The rear of our fascia here that's attached on the bottom we're going to loosen that up there's a fastener here and here we're going to use our 10 millimeter socket to remove those all right so we can pull that back a little bit now the attachment that it went to we're also going to remove that so right here and here this kind of is a y-shaped bracket that goes up to the center we're going to remove that bolt there in the middle so grab a 10 millimeter wrench or you might be able to fit a socket up in there it just kind of depends and go ahead and get that loosened up and it is just a plastic fastener on here All right, after the fastener is removed, that piece will slide off and then we can drop it down out of the way. We're now gonna remove the exhaust tips that are located here at the back. There's a fastener on each side of our tip. We'll use a T40 Torx to remove those two fasteners. We'll zip that one out and we'll zip this one out. And then hold your tip. It shouldn't slide off of there, but it potentially could. So. Just brace it there. Once you get both fasteners removed, it should slide out towards the rear. It kind of feels like we got a clip we might have to release here. Ah, so it's here at the top. You have to actually push it in just a little bit so you can pull down to clear those clips. And then we can drop it out of there. That was the little clips that was kind of holding it in up there. We'll remove the other side the same way. Now we can go ahead and lower our exhaust down. I am gonna take a strap here and I'm hooking it on our sway bar just on the outside of each side, on the outside of the bushing clamps. And then we'll cinch that up there. That's just to support it and then we can use that to lower it down. But we don't wanna lower it too far where it causes any damage to anything. The exhaust is held up by the hangers. You'll have one on each side right there. So we're gonna remove those. To take those off, I recommend using some silicone spray and a pry bar. We're gonna spray the hanger to lube it up a little bit to make it slide off of there easier. And then we'll use our pry bar to push the hanger off. There we go, push that one off, then we'll do the other side next. Now with both sides off of there, we're gonna to come to the middle here and loosen up our straps some. 
and that's that'll be good there it's just enough to where we can kind of pull it down get our stuff in there but our strap will support it preventing it from going too low now we're going to remove out the fasteners here at the rear on each side the fastener where we're at here if you look at the hanger where you just removed your exhaust the hanger on the one side if you go towards the rear of the vehicle and then slightly towards the inside you'll find that bolt it is an inverted torx but you can remove it with an eight millimeter that will slide on your inverted torx so you can get it removed we'll then remove the one on the other side the same way it's just right over here And now we'll have to modify our heat shield by trimming out some of it so we can install our components. So I've gone ahead and marked out the section here. We're gonna cut out this section from our heat shield so we can access our fasteners. You can use a rotary tool if you want, um, but I'm gonna use a pair of tin snips. It's kind of my preferred method. I would recommend a pair of straight tin snips if you have those. That'll be your best, uh, cleanest cut. After you've got it cut out, you can actually just fold it back and just bend it back and forth and you'll get a pretty decent clean cut from doing that. You can see it just kind of cutting its way by itself. Once you get to the very end there, you might have to grab your snips once again just to snip the last little piece. Or it might just pull off of there just like that. And then we'll do the same thing over on the other side. We got both sides cut out and after you cut it out, it's not uncommon for the edges here to be pretty sharp from your cutting tool, whatever one you used there it's likely going to be sharp in that area so you could take a file to clean it up a little bit it's kind of difficult so what i usually recommend doing is just grab a hammer and just kind of tap it up around those edges and push those edges up around the way and that helps curl them back away from where your hands are going to be you could also wear some gloves to protect yourself while working in this area because uh, if you're not very careful with what you're doing you could cut yourself pretty easily after you've trimmed those out and kind of hammered it back out of the way two studs were revealed underneath there and we're going to remove the nuts that's on those studs so you have two here and then on the opposite side where you trimmed out the same location over there you're going to remove those as well we're going to use a 16 millimeter socket to remove these and you may have to use a wrench because it is in kind of a weird spot to get to Like we may, because of the exhaust hanger there, have to resort to a wrench there, or at least with a swivel socket. We're gonna grab a swivel and see if we can't make that happen. And with our swivel, looks like we're gonna be okay. Right there to the very end. And then we'll take off the ones on the other side the same way. All right, so we just tried to test fit the hitch and we actually couldn't get it to push far enough onto the studs. And if we look here at all this stuff, this sealant that they put over all the seam and weld points, we need to trim that off of there because that was preventing us from being able to push the hitch into place. So just grab your razor knife and we're gonna get up in here and trim this off. And it is gonna be a little difficult to trim because there's gonna be welds behind this stuff. So it's not like it's gonna be smooth. So just take your time, get as much of that off there as you can. So now with an extra set of hands, we're gonna lift our hitch into position. You will have to pull out on the fascia some so we can get the bottom of the hitch needs to be above the fascia. Push it into position over the studs and then use the factory nuts that we removed and just thread it right onto there. So now we're gonna go ahead and put our clamps in place. You've got two, two bars like this and they're a little bit different shape. You're going to use one of these and one of these uh, on one side and then use the other two on the other side. Now they do need to go a certain way. You can see the holes are offset. They're not side specific. You just got to flip it around until you get the right orientation for this particular side. So we're going to start with the one here that has the slotted square and round hole. The round hole is going to line up with the weld nut that was right here where the factory bolt that we took out and then the hole there and over here will line up with our slotted hole and with our square hole. So feed this in over the side. And actually I noticed our sticker's kind of in the way here. So I'm gonna clean up that sticker. If it's covering up one of your holes, easier to see if you clean it out. So we'll slide that on top of there. That single hole should line up with that weld nut. So I'm trying to find that there, there we go. And then it'll drop down and sit right on that weld nut. Now we'll take the carriage bolts that come in our kit. One of them is gonna drop down through the slotted hole and poke out the hole there through our hitch. The other one's gonna go on the other side through the square hole 
This one's a little bit more difficult to access, but you should be able to get your hand up in there as necessary and, and get it to drop down. There we go. Get that one to drop down as well. Now we'll take our other plate here. This is the different shape one. This U-shaped cutout is going to sit like this. So the solid piece is going to be towards the rear. The u cutout is going to go around where the factory bolt would go. So this will just slide up on there. And then we'll place our flange nuts on to the carriage bolts to hold that together. All right, after you've got those fed on, we're then gonna grab the smaller hex bolts that come in your kit. We're gonna put one of the smaller conical tooth washers on it with the teeth on the washer facing towards the hitch. And that'll thread up into that factory bolt hole. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side with all of our pieces of hardware. So now we've got all of our hardware loosely installed, we can go back and start tightening it down. I'm gonna do the factory nuts first on the studs here on the back side. We'll snug those down. That'll just draw it all the way in as much as it can. And then after that, we'll go back and torque and tighten all the fasteners that we can get to from below there. Then we'll snug up our carriage bolts that we dropped down. We're gonna use a 19 millimeter socket for these. And then a 13 millimeter for the smaller bolts going into the factory weld nut. We're gonna use a half inch torque wrench for the larger bolts, and then you'll probably wanna switch down to a 3 8 torque wrench for these smaller bolts to better line up with its torque spec. And we got our 3 8 torque wrench there for our smaller bolts. With all this hardware torqued down, we can go ahead and put our exhaust back up now. We're just gonna respray the hanger and just lift it on up and just poke it right in there. You should be able to just push it in by hand, just like that. And we'll do the other side the same way. Might have to bring it down a little. Spray it. And then this one's actually a little bit stiffer on this side. So it may be necessary to grab your pry bar and actually pry the exhaust away from the hanger a little bit. So you can get it to line up and then we can get it pushed in there. And you do want to make sure you get it pushed all the way to where the uh, expanded end pops through the other side. We can then take our strap down and we do have another component we'll need to install to further brace our hitch. We'll take the shorter carriage bolts that come in our kit now, and those are going to drop down into our hitch just on each side there. We'll then grab our center brace, and I'd also recommend grabbing two flange nuts. I'm going to put the flange nuts nearby because they're going to attach to there. Our cross brace will raise up and it will be just in front of the suspension cross member there, so there's the cross member. We're going between the sway bar and the cross member. This will then line up with the holes on our hitch there. And we'll get a flange nut started on each one. So now we're going to take the longer hex bolt that comes in our kit. We're going to put a conical tooth washer on it, teeth away from the head of the bolt. This is then going to slide through the cross brace that we just put on or through the, the support brace then it'll slide through the cross brace and come out the other side there. We're going to do that with each bolt here real quick just to kind of get them roughly into position 
and then you'll have this big nut plate here. This will go up here and line up with your bolts. Go ahead and just kind of lift up just a little bit. And then we'll start that into the nut plate there. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side here. So now we're just gonna push up just a little bit on our plate here. Then we're gonna snug them down with a 19 millimeter socket. And then we can go back and torque all of our hardware to the specifications outlined in our instructions. And then don't forget to install your exhaust tips. Those will just slide right back in where they came from and you'll use your T40 Torx bit to secure them back into place. And we'll do the other side the same way. Now we do get a couple of pins in our kit that we'll push through here to secure it back to a pre-existing hole on our hitch. But the pins are pretty large and they don't really fit through the holes very well. So we're gonna use a 5-8 drill bit to widen up that hole just a little bit. And then we can push it through and then just push it right up into the hitch. Might have to use a small screwdriver or hammer or something to tap it all the way. And that completes our installation of Kurt's Class 3 2-inch trailer hitch receiver on our 2017 Mercedes GLS 450.